What's up guys? We are back with another educational video. And in this week, we're talking beer. Specifically, can you drink beer and make gains? So this comes on the heels of a new study that came out this month where they examined not resistance training, but high intensity interval training and whether or not moderate amounts of alcohol negatively impacted those adaptations. So they examined the effect of alcohol, specifically they called that beer, but they also used hard liquor, on like hand grip strength, as well as several different jump tests, looking at did a moderate intake of alcohol negatively affect these training adaptations over 10 weeks. So they had people start a program where they would do two high intensity interval sessions per week, and they split them into a few different groups. There was one group that was acting as a control. They didn't exercise. Uh, there was another group, or there was two groups that got alcohol. One got beer, one got hard liquor mixed with uh, soda water. Then there were two groups that got non-alcoholic beer and then just soda water. So those were kind of the control groups. And actually one of the things I liked is they let people self-select which group they wanted to be in. Now that might sound weird because normally we randomize people to groups, but the problem with randomization is you can randomize somebody to a group they don't wanna be in. And that can have a negative impact on how well that does Vice versa, if somebody really wants to be in a group and they get in that group, that can have a really positive impact on how things go for them just due to the power of suggestion and placebo. So in my opinion, and I remember talking to Andy Galpin about this and really like what he had to say, we like to see people self-select which group they're gonna go to. That way, at least everybody has a positive opinion of the group they're going into. Now, there was about equal parts men and women. There was a little bit more men than there was women. They let themselves select either to be in an alcoholic group, beer or hard liquor, they got to choose, or non. And they had two drinks per day. They had a drink at lunch and a drink at dinner. So, I mean, when I say drink, I mean the equivalent of, you know, I think it's an ounce and a half shot in soda water or a beer that's about 5.4% alcohol. So just kind of your average beer that's out there. So they did this for 10 weeks. So every day, the group getting alcohol got two drinks per day. They did two hit sessions per week. At the end of 10 weeks, they examined them and they found that all groups improved in the measures they looked at and they improved to the same extent. This fits with the data we already have right now looking at alcohol, which seems to suggest that low to moderate amounts of alcohol do not negatively impact resistance training adaptations or any kind of training adaptation. Now people ask, what about body composition? It also appears that if you account for the calories and alcohol, moderate amounts of alcohol consumption do not negatively impact body composition. Now the caveat to that is alcohol is actually pretty calorie dense. So even something like a light beer has 100 calories. That would be equivalent to, you know, nearly a bowl of oatmeal and a beer or a shot of alcohol, or a glass of wine, all are around 80 to 120 calories, not really satisfying. And if you think about how much people drink when they go out and they're social, four, five, six, seven drinks, you can easily get to around 1,000 calories just from alcohol. I think that it's difficult to be a regular drinker and hit calories that are conducive to a good body composition, especially with fat loss, however, can it be done? Certainly. And if you're somebody who's very active and you have a high amount of calories you can consume and still get to your body composition goals, then it's probably fine. But you need to keep in mind that it's just not that satiating. High amounts of alcohol intake definitely have negative adaptations on resistance training. When I say high amounts of alcohol, I mean, if you're drinking enough to get drunk, probably over five or six drinks, you're gonna see decreases in testosterone, you're gonna see decreases in performance. It also negatively impacts sleep, negatively impacts recovery. So basically, if you're somebody who you just like to have a beer with dinner or something like that, or a glass of wine or whatever, hey, no big deal. And even two or three drinks, probably not a big deal. If you're drinking five, six, seven, eight drinks at a time, that is gonna have some negative consequences. Now that being said, most of those consequences are pretty short term. So if you're somebody who wants to go out and let loose, my recommendation would be make sure you've got your hard training for the week done. And then if you wanna do that, it's probably less detrimental, although it probably will negatively impact your recovery from your previous weight training session. Moral of the story, in moderation, alcohol 
probably fine in terms of body composition and performance. You get to high amounts, probably not so good. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If you liked the video, click like, subscribe, and I will catch you next time.